Hi there, this is the Cory Doctorow podcast, and it's a big day here in, uh, in my family's life. Um, it's my daughter Posey's first day in the big room at daycare. Uh, she's almost two. Uh, she'll be two in about a week, and a bunch of the almost twos are moving down from the uh, caterpillar room to the butterfly room. We're all very, very excited for her and know she's going to do very well. Uh, the other news, of course, is that I'm almost done with Clockwork Fagan, that uh, steampunk young adult story that I'll be reading you shortly in this podcast, uh, being written for the young adult steampunk anthology that Kelly Link and Gavin Grant are editing together. Um, and the other other news is that I'm headed to Graz in, uh, or Graz in, in Austria for the Creative Industries Conference on the 4th of the month, 4th of February. And those of you who are in or near Graz, uh, I hope to see you. It would be nice to say hello. Um, for my friends in Vienna, my regrets. I don't think I'm going to be able to schedule a visit. I really tried to squeeze one in, but it just didn't work out. Anyway, that's enough of that. Let's finish off reading you the Martian Chronicles, or just Martian Chronicles. Uh, the story for Jonathan Strawn's forthcoming young adult science fiction anthology. Dad burst into the cabin, outraged. Is it true, he said, his eyes red-rimmed, burning, his chest heaving. Mom leapt off the bunk where she'd been working with some of the ship's polymer maintenance putty to make one of her little abstract sculptures. David, please calm yourself, she said in her I really mean it voice. We all listened when Mom got that tone. It made Dad pull up short like he'd been whacked over the nose with a rolled-up newspaper. He took a deep breath. Sorry, he said. Sorry. Okay. I have just heard the most remarkable rumor about our son here, he said, gesturing at me. A truly incredible rumor. Mom started to say something, but I got to my feet, and she stopped. It's true, I said. What's true, Mom said. I reached for my handheld and dialed up the ad we'd sent to every mailbox on the Eagle. Members needed. Announcing an altogether new kind of corp, the Martian New Chums Cooperative is open to anyone who is willing to work for the cause of a fair deal for all Martians. Why? Because the deck is stacked on Mars. Four large companies monopolize all the wealth, power, and privilege on our new home, and when you land, you can expect to spend the rest of your life working your guts out for the new aristocrats. You may think that this only applies in Martian Chronicles, but we've got news for you. Life on Mars is the Martian Chronicles. No one's mentioned it to us yet. I wonder why not. But it makes lots of sense, doesn't it? After all, why set up a government, stock exchange, messaging system, and all the other machinery of society when you've got a perfectly good one sitting right there on your game server? Oh yes, there's lots they haven't told you about life on Mars. Rather than whining about it, we're doing something about it. The New Chums Co-op will not trade with the cartels. We will make our own oxygen, generate our own power, and manufacture our own goods, buying and serving from anyone except the cartel. We won't have the same stuff, but your ray guns will go to your fellow new chums, and their ray guns will go back to you, and we'll all prosper together. We'll be a democracy, one member, one vote, and we'll help each other. Want to join? Great! The new chums co-op will begin signing on members in 72 hours, which should give you plenty of time to get your kids to show you how to use Martian Chronicles, get you set up with an account on the Mars server, and verify what you've read here. In the meantime, watch out for dirty tricks from Mars Inc. Watch out for unexplained network outages. Watch out for your fellow colonists being arrested in the name of preserving morale. Aren't you old enough to make up your own mind about what's true and what isn't? Do you really want a big daddy corporation locking up people who say things that it disagrees with? Membership opens in 72 hours. Meanwhile, any questions? Ask the co-op's founders. Vijay Mukherjee. Senior Auditor, Retired. David Brian Oglethorpe Smith III, CEO, DBoss Corp., Retired. Helen Gonzalez Ginsburg, Liquidity Specialist, Retired. P.S. If we get arrested, the co-op is still on. Organize yourselves. No whining. Mom looked at me as if I'd sprouted another head and three extra arms. Dad was trembling slightly, suddenly looking much, much older. I leaned back in my seat. I'd known this was coming, had feared it, had come through the fear. It was a relief to have it out in the open after all the stress of wondering what would happen when my parents found out, when the whole ship found out. Helene had said to me, the fear of the consequences are always worse than the consequences themselves. 
I don't think that they can afford to arrest us, not after everyone on the ship has read it, I said, trying to sound casual, trying to convince myself that I was calm. Dad slumped. I can't believe that you... Mom put her hand on his arm. Is it true, David? Which part, I said, again trying for a nonchalance I didn't feel. All of it! I could see that beneath her calm exterior, she was ready to lose her cool. All of it is true, I said. Mars is run by four corps, and everyone works for them. You can verify it for yourself. Just create a Martian Chronicles account and start looking around. And yes, Mars runs on the Martian Chronicles server. Have a look and you can see it. Our quarters are assigned in the Burroughs Warren, and the spaceport is booked for the Eagle's arrival. The City Hall Forum is full of people talking about real life. We had decided not to mention Laney's offer to me. I promised her that I'd keep it a secret, and I didn't want her to be able to go around telling everyone that I didn't honor my promises. I needed to be squeaky clean if I was going to be on the co-op steering committee. And it's true that we started the co-op. Technically, it's just another corp, but VJ structured the bylaws so that it gets to run like a cooperative. He's good at that kind of thing. VJ, Mom said? The Pov, Dad said, the one he pals around with. He sounded shell-shocked. We're all Povs now, Dad. I swallowed, looked into his eyes. It was hard to do. We're headed to Mars to clean the toilets. That's the thing we discovered. And the people Mars side, they're fine with that. After all, if we were too good for toilet cleaning, we would have been in the first wave. They'll say that they're too good to clean toilets, and they'll prove it by pointing out that we're all broke, and the only jobs they have for us are the worst, crappiest jobs. Anyone who disagrees will be a whiner. That had been the real surprise, once Mars OS was running on all my devices. The message boards filled with Martians, fantasizing about how great it would be once the next wave of colonists arrived, how they'd be able to solve the labor shortage and finally hire people at affordable wages to do the real work of running the colony. A tear slid down Dad's cheek. David, you're making trouble for us, for our family. Mom pulled him into a hug. Shh, she said. Sounds like the trouble was already there. Dad kind of collapsed into her arms, and she met my eyes and made a little scooting gesture behind his back. I took the hint and left. Standing outside the door was Laney. She was perfectly composed, leaning against the corridor wall. There was no one else in the corridor. Laney had that effect on people. If you saw her standing somewhere, you'd go somewhere else. Hello, David, she said. I talked this over with Helene and Vijay, too. Helene had been busted dozens of times, and Vijay had made plenty of busts. They knew how it went. I nodded and held my wrists out, as though for handcuffs. She smiled and shook her head. Oh, I'm not going to put you in the brig, young Mr. Smith. Not at all. The last thing I want to do is create a martyr for your little cause on Mars. When I told Vijay about this, he nodded curtly and said, Smart. But I just want to put a little whisper in your ear, a little seed of doubt for you to remember when we land on Mars, when the people I work for take serious steps to ensure that you don't upset the apple cart. You ready for it? I nodded, not trusting myself to speak, barely trusting myself not to wet my pants. It's this. You could have been a king, a CEO, rich, famous, powerful, admired. You could have had it all. But now, no matter what happens, no matter whether your little co-op is crushed or soldiers on raggedly, you will always be a pov and a leader of povs. She whispered it like a curse, and I knew she was right. They arrested us 48 hours after Mars fall. Every co-op member. Conspiracy and restraint of trade. We put up quite a defense and accused Mars Inc. of the cardinal sin of whining at every turn. And they did let us go eventually. And by the time they did, nearly every new chum had signed up for the co-op. And the game got really, really fun. Well, that's it. Thanks for hanging in there, guys. Talk to you next week. You've been listening to the Cory Doctor Podcast, licensed under Creative Commons Attribution, non-commercial, share-alike US 3.0. Or as Woody Guthrie put it in another context, this song is copyrighted in the US under seal of copyright 154085 for a period of 28 years, and anyone caught singing it without our permission will be a mighty good friend of ours, because we don't give a dern. Publish it, write it, sing it, swing to it, yodel it, we wrote it, that's all we wanted to do. 
Many thanks to John Taylor Williams for mastering. That's Rynex Studio, W-R-Y-N-E-C-K Studio at gmail.com. John Taylor Williams is a full-time self-employed audio engineer, producer, composer, and sound designer. In his free time, he makes beer, jewelry, odd musical instruments, and furniture. He likes to meditate, to read, and to cook. Talk to you next week.